Hey Tubies, this is Psychic Bob. It is so rocking to be with you. Well, I'm here today and I'm sitting and meditating on one of my Lemurian, or excuse me, one of my Atlantean crystals. Um, this is a crystal, it's from Atlantis. Isn't this beautiful? Now, I've done shows here on Lemurian crystals and Atlantean, and you might say, well, what's the difference? Well, really, they're very similar. They're just from different geographic areas. Uh, this is a Lemurian crystal, and one of the ways that you know it's Lemurian is it does not have the ridges on it. The Lemurian crystals have ridges, which are the lines that records are encoded upon. You don't really find ridges, at least I haven't, on Atlantean crystals. And uh, the person that I bought this from said that it was from the eastern seaboard. Uh, so it was, um, you know, from the area where Atlantis existed. So generally crystals that are Lemurian are found out in the, the western area, like Pacific coast. So if you have a good, beautiful quartz and it's from the eastern coast of the United States, it's most likely an, uh, an Atlantean crystal. But anyways, they're both powerful. Not Neither one is better than the other. So don't say, well, should we have a Lemurian or Atlantean? It doesn't matter. We're crystals because they're all blessed and they bring a lot of power. But, you know, that gets us into the subject of today. And welcome to Friday. It's UFO Friday. That's right. Uh, before we get into everything, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who came up to Zodiac Thursday. We had such a good time with that, didn't we? I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, send me your questions. Uh, write to me at readings at robert-hickman.com. I'll put the link in the info box below. Uh, and send me your questions for next Thursday, for Zodiac Thursday. And uh, we'll uh, pull one of those and do a chart and, and anal analyze your situation. Well, here it is. It's UFO Friday. And... I'm sitting here today, I've been looking at this amazing book. This is one of my favorite, favorite books. Um, this is called Return to Atlantis. And this is from the Unarius Society. Isn't that beautiful? Um, Unarius is a group that studies UFO phenomena and ancient cultures. And uh, this book was channeled uh, by two people was Ruth Norman. There's a picture of her. She's one of the founders of Unarius. And one of her assistants, which is Charles Spagel, who uses the name Antares, uh, he's also a channel. And they both received this transmission from the Pleiadians. Uh, and it tells about life on Earth and life in Atlantis. And I think it's absolutely fascinating because... You know, when we talk about the UFO phenomena, we have to look at the entire history of the human race. And I'll tell you, as a psychic, right now, I am finding an amazing experience. I have a lot of people coming for readings, and I'm seeing a lot of people who are literally Atlanteans from ancient Atlantis reincarnated. And it's so amazing because when I tell them, I say, you have, have had a previous life in Atlantis. I've never had somebody go, what? I've had almost every single person said, I believe that. I can feel that. I know that's true. And, you know, it's got me thinking, like, why are we seeing so many Atlanteans reincarnated? Well, I think it got me thinking about you know, the whole history of Atlantis and what all that means. And I've done other videos on that, but I think it's worth today talking about Atlantis, particularly in relation to our times we're living in uh, and in also relation to the UFOs. Now, one of the other big themes that I've been seeing as a psychic is a lot of people coming for readings her saying to me, Psyche Bob, I have been in contact with aliens. I feel they're talking to me. I'm receiving messages. I also get people saying, I've been abducted. I've been aboard the craft. And most of us said they don't feel afraid of the abductions. They feel, in fact, they're really more visitors. They're invited onto the craft rather than being forcibly taken. Now, 
Now, you know, we've talked about the different brands of aliens or branches or races. Uh, the ones who seem to create the most trauma are the gray aliens. They're the ones with the big eyes. Let me put a gray up here for you. Now, let me clarify. The gray aliens seem to be a more, what I would say, a recent phenomena, at least in relation to Earth and humans' interactions. But when we go way, 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 way back, what we encounter are humans that are in, have encountered human aliens who look exactly like us. Well, my spirit guides, as well as many people I've spoken to, have been able to confirm it that the ancient aliens who visited the Earth were not so much the gray aliens, though they were around then, but the ones who actually helped humanity were the Pleiadians. And I've said it before, and it's really true, the Pleiadian race are literally human. They look exactly like us. They're a little taller than us, but physically they look exactly like us. A Pleiadian could walk down the street and you wouldn't know it. Well, you know, as I was studying this book here, it's interesting because the channels who channeled this information also received messages from Pleiadians, and that's how they created this book. So I was sitting here looking at, in fact, I thought I'd just read to you a little bit of passage from this book here. And this is from the introduction to Return to Atlantis. And it says, this is right at the beginning of the intro, it says, the true history of the earth world has been limited in its understanding of past civilizations as they have existed on the planet Earth. These civilizations are the basic imprint of the ascendancy and descendancy of historical renditions and true factors that have contributed to the present, present decadency upon your planet. Atlantis is a reality within the minds of all Earth people, although they may not be consciously aware of memories that have been inscribed within their mental structures. But still, the influence is a definite factor within the life patterns of all inhabitants on planet Earth. In this book, Return to Atlantis, the beautiful jewel of this island continent is exposed and the many faceted reflections of those higher minds who were the founders of this great civilization are brought to the surface in such a way um, that the individual will, as he is the individual will, as he is scanning the word structures, remember his own experiences from this time of over sixty thousand years ago. At its height, the Atlantean civilization was a paradise on earth. Each soul, as he expressed his own positive bias into this society, was experiencing the fruits that were the labor of love of the cosmic brothers, the space brothers who had initiated this mission on the planet earth. The technology as it flourished the technology, as it flourished and found a greater receptivity within the minds of those individuals who were living at this time, truly was a technology that was based upon those spiritual principles, which were the giving of self and the understanding of man as spirit. Brotherly love and compassion for all life forms were the basic principles upon which this society was established. Anyways, I could go on and on. This is an amazing book. But what's interesting is that right from the beginning, they confirm that it was the space brother, the Palladian. Later on, they explain it's the Palladians who had a hand in the colonization and development of life on Earth. Now, you know, why I think that we're having so much, um, so many people reincarnating and so much uh, experience and sightings of UFOs and people experiencing visitations is that I believe we're at a turning point. 
Now, as many of you know, I always talk about astrology here. And, you know, in astrology, we talk about turning into the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius is the age of enlightenment. It's peace and brotherhood. Um, we are leaving the age of Pisces. And the age of Pisces was the age of religious doctrine, order and structure. And it certainly had its time and its place in society. But now we're stepping into the age of Aquarius. And Aquarius, as you know, or may not know, but it is an air sign, which means the power of the mind. And I think it's this literal revolving of the cosmic cycle into the age of Aquarius, which is bringing a lot of souls into the earth now, that people want to be part of it. As I said, I've encountered a lot of people that are Atlanteans reincarnated. And it makes me really have to say why. And I've come to the conclusion that the Earth to make a successful transition into the age of Aquarius needs people who are of a higher mind. You see, this is why we're seeing a lot of, for example, institutions, and I'm not picking on anybody, but a lot of the traditional religious institutions of our day start to crumble. It's because people are tired of the old ways that limit them and they're ready to, in a sense, start new. But really what they want to do is go back to what we know before. It's my belief that through contact with the aliens, we evolved a society of super high technology. Isn't that beautiful? We literally lived in palaces of crystals. We literally had pyramids of solid crystal. Now, what happened though was that you see, not being in the age of Aquarius back when Atlantis first existed, inhibited its ability to handle the knowledge and the technology. Atlantis destroyed itself. It, it's believed that there was a form of war, possibly like a nuclear war, that literally destroyed, you know, a third of the planet and crushed all of the civilizations. Now, a lot of people used to say, oh, Atlantis, that's just a myth that a psychics talk about. But very interestingly, many scientists are now finding remnants of lost cities off the eastern seaboard of the United States. And what is interesting is that the structures resemble ancient Greek temples, but they existed before the time of the Greek civilization. So historically, it does not fit the pattern. Now, there's also, and I've done a video on it before, but I'll just touch on it. Off of the coast of Bermuda, which is about an hour off of the coast of where I live, uh, there is a, an underground pyramid, an underwater pyramid, and the capstone is solid crystal. Some people say the entire pyramid's crystal, some say the capstone. I'm not sure. I think it's actually the whole pyramid is crystal, though. But there have been people, and I've actually met people, who have actually been out in boats and have told me directly, you can literally look down in the water because it's so clear there at night, and the pyramid literally glows. So it's very fascinating. Of course, science is now trying to ignore this because if this is all true, it throws a major kink in our historical timeline models for all of civilization. But you see, this is what the age of Aquarius is about. It's about us stepping into a higher reality, a new reality. This is why we're starting to see a lot of UFOs around the world because in a sense, the space brethren are returning. They know the eternal cycle of life. They know that souls reincarnate, and they know that many ancient Atlanteans are now coming back to the earth. And with the people of Atlantis being reborn, this means that technology is going to flourish even more rapidly in the coming years. And we may even see the rebuilding of an Atlantis-like culture I believe eventually um, 
that we'll start to see some cataclysms off the eastern seaboard, which will create earthquakes. And we may literally see some of the ancient structures and temples literally rise out of the ocean. Now, I know that sounds a little crazy and dramatic, but I'm not the only psychic who's seen it. You could research this. Many of us have seen it. Edgar Casey even predicted it. So there's a lot of evidence now for this. And, you know, I want you to understand that, as I said, Atlantis is connected through, uh, they advance through their connection with the Pleiadians. And I believe the Pleiadians are returning to Earth and I do believe Atlantis will rise again. So anyways, that's just a little bit I want to share with you. I want you guys to think about it. You know, you might want to spend some time seeking out some crystals, get an Atlantean crystal and wear it. See, I found out through channeling that I'm also an Atlantean reincarnated. And, you know, it's an amazing reality because whenever I touch an Atlantean crystal, it's like I'm transported there. I know that that exists. And deep within my soul, I also know that I've seen the Pleiadians face to face. So when the Pleiadians return to planet Earth, I think for many of us, this is going to be an awakening. It's not going to be like a terror. It's not going to be, oh my God, aliens are here. It'll be like, oh my God, I feel like I already know you. And the truth is, on a soul level, we do know them and we are connected. And so when we talk about the return of the aliens and full disclosure, which will come soon, we don't have to enter into a trepidation. This time we, we have a chance to get it right. See, a lot of the people reincarnating, reincarnating are Atlanteans and a lot of them were there at the time of the destruction. So on our soul level, we know that the power of the intellect that moves so fast that it doesn't ground or attune with its spiritual nature can and will lead to destruction. And this is why the teachings of the New Age uh, are so important, because they remind us to look within. See, the great sin of the Atlanteans were, uh, the great sin was that they focus solely on the mind without the connection to the heart. This book talks about the Lemurian culture as well a little bit. And I always say the great difference between Lemuria, which was in the Pacific, and Atlantis, which was in the Atlantic Ocean area, was that the Lemurians never lost touch with their heart. The Atlanteans did. They got so intellectual. You know, I'm an Aquarius, and Aquarius is an air sign. And one of the struggles for Aquarians is that we do get up in our head and we forget our heart or we don't act with compassion. So this is something that I try to be aware of, you know, the, to reconnect to my heart center. And I find that when I wear crystals like Atlantean or Lemurian crystals over my heart chakra, you see, then uh, that heart chakra is empowered. And I think this is so important. And if we want to advance and really move into the age of Aquarius now, we want to work with that power that is available. So, you know, when you find an Atlantean crystal, you can use it to channel your higher self. You can channel memories of times there. And I believe also these can be used as communicating devices to draw to us the Pleiadians who were part of the Atlantean culture. So I recommend that you, you know, get a crystal and wear it over your heart. And this is a quartz crystal. Uh, you can search for Lemurian and Atlantean crystals. As I said, they look very similar, um, but generally the, the Atlantean crystals don't have striations. That tends to be a Lemurian thing. So the Atlanteans are plainer. Uh, it's my experience the Lemurian crystals, or the Atlantean crystals, excuse me, it's my experience, are a little thicker and a little more stout. They're not as long as the Lemurians. Just my experience. 
But, um, you know, I'm going to wear my Atlantean crystal and um, I'm going to meditate on this connection because we really are at a turning point. And I think all of us working together to raise our vibration, raise our consciousness can help bring about literally the rise of Atlantis, the return of the ancient times and the reconnection to the star people. And this is going to evolve our planet. So I would encourage you, check out this book. Look for it on, you probably get it on eBay. I don't know if it's still in print, uh, but it's called Return to Atlantis. It's a hardback. I don't know if they make this in softback, but uh, excellent book. And it's written by Uriel and Antares. Anyways, guys, I'm so glad you're here. So I just want to share those thoughts with you on UFO Friday. Tell me, listen, tell me in the box below, um, have you ever worn a crystal and had a connection to Atlantis? What was that like for you? Have you ever worn a crystal and felt a presence, a connection to the alien presence, the Palladians or any of the other aliens? I want to hear about that. Share with me your thoughts, you know, especially for those of you who live on the eastern coast of the United States, uh, as I do. You know, have you felt that Atlantean power? I have whenever I go to the beach, like Virginia Beach, I feel like it's like just off the shore there, there's a whole reality under the ocean. I've sensed that. So anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, I'm so glad you're here. Listen, keep it here. We got more coming tomorrow is going to be Saturday night seance. Uh, so we'll have that. Now, in regards to horoscopes, I told you guys I'm taking a little break until next week. So on Monday, we'll have horoscopes again. Uh, but for right now, we're going to just focus on what I can do. Uh, and I'm going to work on one video a day and get it out for you. And next week, we'll have horoscopes back, okay? You guys are the best. Thanks for being here. By the way, if you want to show Psychic Bob some love, like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe. Be part of our channel. We'd love you to be here. Well, listen, put your comments in the box below and uh, share your thoughts with me. Let's have a discussion. We'll see you back here tomorrow also for Saturday Night Seance. Blessed be.